I've seen a lot recently about red wine and red wine being potentially good for gut health and the microbiome. And a champion of the red wine and microbiome story is Professor Tim Spector, who's also part of the Zoe company and Zoe study. Um, and he's published work suggesting that even uh, sparse and moderate, mild, however you want to define it, consumption of red wine increases the diversity of the microbiome in red wine drinkers compared to quote unquote control groups. So groups that don't drink red wine. And the theory there is that uh, red wine uh, contains uh, polyphenols. We've talked about polyphenols before on this podcast in the context of the three Ps, polyphenols, probiotics and prebiotics. The three Ps are superpowers for your microbiome and your gut health. Some people push back a little bit on this and go, well, hold on a second. Alcohol is a toxin. It's not good for you. And you can get the same benefits from grape juice or from eating grapes. But actually, there's higher polyphenol content in red wine than there is in grape juice and also probably from grapes that you eat. And there's a variety of different reasons for that. One is when you're manufacturing or producing wine, you use uh, all of the grape, including the skin, and also the seeds and um, sometimes even the stems. And in totality, there's higher concentrations there than just the flesh, depending on how you like to eat your grape. There's also the fermentation process um, where it's for reasons that I don't actually fully understand, the uh, polyphenol content increases. Um, and in white wine, the skins are removed before fermentation, which means the polyphenol content is lower. So red wine definitely has more polyphenols than white wine. Uh, in addition to that, there's concentration and the types of grapes used to produce red wine are slightly different, I believe, to the grapes that you consume. And these grapes that are used to produce red wine um, have a uh, higher uh, polyphenol content. Um, and the specific group variety that goes into red wine obviously influences the polyphenol content. So it'd be interesting to take a look at which grapes contain the most and you could maybe select your wine based on the highest polyphenol content. Now, on the flip side, alcohol is a toxin and alcohol has an impact on the gut barrier, particularly in the small intestine and damage to that gut barrier can lead to something which we call leaky gut and leaky gut essentially refers to the junctions that make up the inner lining of your intestine, which are usually tight, starting to get weaker and starting to splay. And that barrier, which protects the rest of the body and the bloodstream from, and the immune system from the inner aspect of the intestine, gets less strong. And as a result, some bacteria can seep through into the rest of the body and toxins can seep through as well. And it's definitely true that the more alcohol you Call all up, more alcohol you consume, the more leaky your gut. And the research on alcohol is kind of interesting because some studies suggest that mild to moderate drinking and always be aware of the fact that mild to moderate and the recommended daily and weekly allowances vary from country to country. Some studies suggest that mild to moderate drinking has a positive impact on lifespan. And people also refer to these blue zones and a Mediterranean diet where wine with dinner is very common, daily drinking is very common. Other studies suggest that any alcohol is bad because alcohol is a toxin. And some people argue that whatever benefit you get from drinking alcohol in terms of lowering blood pressure is offset by the deleterious negative effects associated with processing the alcohol uh, within the body. Now, bringing it back to red wine, because I'm going to do a much longer episode on alcohol and my thoughts on that. Based on the research, small amounts, moderate amounts of red wine seems to have a positive impact on the gut microbiome. But where that positive benefit tips over into gut damaging is really hard to tell. So the take home is you shouldn't start drinking red wine or drink more red wine because you want to improve your gut microbiome. But if you enjoy red wine, and some of it does taste so blooming good, especially with food, then you should know that there's some beneficial aspects within there. And if you wanted to make the gut healthy, gut microbiome choice, if you were going to drink wine, you would drink red wine over white wine. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this episode on red wine. 
we've talked about polyphenols, we've talked about the difference between red and white wine, we've talked about the difference between red wine and grape juice in the context of polyphenol. If you've enjoyed this short, very short episode, please like and subscribe and kindly consider giving a five-star review. Remember, gut health is health. <laughs>